You are watching DHTV from California State University, Dominguez Hills. Okay, so this is the conservative agenda part two. Uh, this we're going to take a look at what happens in the 1990s that's going to lead to uh, the second Bush administration. But um, again, the terrorist who struck the two towers of the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, made full use of the web of commercial and technological connections to const uh, that constitute globalization. But um, let's go to uh, Papa Bush and let's appreciate the conservative agenda under Papa Bush because strained relations between African Americans and Korean immigrants are going to be considered one of the roots of the Los Angeles riots of 1992. Now, also in California, California is going to pass uh, Proposition 13, and due in part to this proposition, the state of California in 1992 faced bankruptcy. The label that most accurately identifies the placement of Bill Clinton on the American pol political spectrum is centrist. So let's take a look at Bill Clinton. The, pan the plan that was accepted by President Clinton, uh, especially uh, uh, when we take a look at his positions is uh, really what we call Republican light. The plan accepted, especially uh, by Bill Clinton, concerning gays in the military was that discrimination against gays in the military was prohibited as long as their sexual orientation was not revealed. So in his first year of his presidency, President Clinton's major goal was a program to ensure affordable health care for all Americans. It was defeated by special interest groups that were too powerful um, um, to, uh, uh, they were too powerful, and le likewise, the health task, the health care task force just to, could not overcome it. First Lady Hillary Rodman, Rodman Clinton was appointed as a co chair of President Clinton's health care task force. During his first term, President Clinton suffered a major defeat concerning his health care plan. Newt Gingrich was a Georgia congressman who led the 1994. Republican Revolution. The Republicans created what was known as the Contract with America. And the Contract with America called for passage of a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution. And as a result of the 1994 midterm elections, the Republicans gained majorities in both houses of Congress. And the response of Americans to the legislative agenda of Congress elected in the mid midterm 1994 elections indicates that Americans favored economy and government, but they did not favor cuts to programs such as Medicare and Social Security. When in late 1995, President Clinton refused to give in to the demands of the Republican-controlled 104th Congress concerning the federal budget, the Congress refused to pass a continuing budget resolution, thus forcing the government to spend all non-essential actions. In welfare reform, a provision of the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Act of 1996, Clinton attacked welfare benefits. And he limited welfare benefits to a total of five years over an individual's lifetime, thus increasing the homelessness rate. A reason for Clinton's victory in the 1996 presidential election was that he successfully redefined the family values issues, thus reclaiming it from conservatives. This was known as the Family and Medical Leave Act, which required employers to grant workers time off to care for ailing relatives or newborn children. In December 1998, the House of Representatives voted to impeach President Clinton on two counts, including obstruction of justice. The polls in late 1998 and early 1999 clearly indicated that a majority of Americans disagreed with congressional Republicans regarding whether or not President Clinton's sexual relationships with a White House intern and his untruthful statements about it justified impeachment, conviction, and removal from office. And then 24-hour news channels began to rely on scandal to increase their viewership. And this is the reason that the media no longer turned a blind eye to sexual misconduct and infidelity by presidents. In the aftermath of the president, president Clinton's impeachment, Newt Gingrich, Republican Speaker of the House, had to resign when evidence surfaced that he too had engaged in extramarital affairs. Now the goal, then there's the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing. And the goal of the perpetrator of that bombing was to revenge the deaths of members of the Branch Davidian religious sect 
whom he believed had been deliberately killed by the FBI in Waco, Texas. And in the aftermath of the Oklahoma City bombing, groups believing that the federal government was controlled by sinister forces began to make more use of the Internet to spread their beliefs. Matthew Shepard became the victim of a hate crime against gays in 1998. The U.S. involvement in the United Nations humanitarian efforts in Somalia in the early 1990s became controversial when troops loyal to a Somali warlord began deadly attacks against American soldiers, the United States withdrew its troops. And President, Lincoln's, uh, President, Lincoln, President Clinton's mistrust of foreign military interventions is going to be strengthened by the difficulties that accompanied U.S. involvement in Somalia. And in 1999, the breakdown of the 1995 peace agreement concerning the Balkans crisis led to an aerial bombardment of Serbia by U.S.-led NATO, force, NATO forces. And then there's Palestinian self-rule in the Gaza Strip that was a result of the 1993 agreement signed by Yasser Arafat and Yitzhak Rabin. Now, with regards to international efforts to protect the environment, the Clinton administration signed the 1997 Kyoto Protocol on carbon dioxide emissions, but never submitted it for ratification to the Republic-controlled Senate. Osama bin Laden was the mastermind of the 1995 Riyadh Riyad bombing and the bombing of the destroyer USS Cole. So there's been a history, again, of uh, this uh, deception, especially with regards to Osama bin Laden. Now, during the Clinton years, the American economy featured a rising standard of living for both the nation's richest people and the nation's poorest people. One of the roots of the economic boom of the 1990s was the rapid development of information technology. One of the effects of the high-tech industry was the American economy in the 1990s and how it generated improved productivity. So at the heart of the technological revolution of the 1990s was the microprocessor. And during President Clinton's tenure in office, the federal deficit was erased, which lowered interest rates and increased investment. The North American Free Trade Agreement lowered trade and investment barriers between the United States, Mexico, and Canada. And the reason for the extension of full diplomatic recognition to Vietnam in 1995 was pressure for major corporations that wanted to take advantage of the emerging market in Vietnam. The re average real wages of American workers from 1973 to the mid-1990s, though, began to steadily decline. And the environmentalists who opposed globalization argued that it exported pollution and toxic waste into countries that were not prepared to deal with them. Organized labor's reaction to the North American Free Trade Agreement and the 1999 demonstration at the World Trade Organization's meeting in Seattle suggested that many Americans were less enthusiastic about globalization than President Clinton. So in the 2000 presidential election, Al Gore is going to win the popular vote, but did not win the presidency. And in the presidential election of 2000, the Supreme Court, in a narrow five to four vote, ended the vote recount in Florida, thus giving Florida's electoral votes and the presidency to George W. Bush. So again, um, why well, I wore this shirt. President Bush's announcement immediately that the United States would withdraw from the anti-ballistic missile treaty with Russia and build a national missile defense system was an indication that he wanted the United States to plot a unilateralist course in international affairs. Then 9-11 happened. And in the aftermath of 9-11, the Justice Department granted new powers to FBI agents to monitor the internet, to monitor mosques, to monitor rallies that were caused by many civil libertarians to charge the US Justice Department was threatening the freedoms enjoyed by Americans. And in the aftermath of 9-11, many governments allied to the United States objected when the Bush administration asserted that the United States would not wait for security threats to become real, but would instead employ preemptive action to defend the nation. And in the aftermath of the attacks on America on September 11, 2001, President Bush, Vice President Cheney, and Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld began seriously to contemplate toppling the Saddam Hussein government in Iraq. And in the months prior to waging war against Iraq, the Bush administration said that military action against that country was necessary because Saddam Hussein was attempting to acquire nuclear weapons. 
the beliefs of neoconservatives with regards to military action against Saddam Hussein regime in Iraq was that such a war would allow the United States to reshape the Middle East, oppose tyranny, and spread democracy. President George W. Bush, in the months prior to launching the war against Iraq, sought the approval of Congress before launching the war against Saddam Hussein's regime, although he contended that he really did not need that approval for such a step. And with regards to the Iraq war, policymakers in the Bush administration seem not to have planned for the post-war period. Revelations of abuse, torture of prisoners by American guards at Abu Ghraib, prison, the Abu Ghraib prison caused the international community to condemn the United States. And in 2007, a surge in U.S. forces in Iraq, along with an anti-insurgency strategy that emphasizes protecting the civilian population, contributed to a dramatic reduction in violence in Iraq. So that was in foreign policy. With regards to his domestic agenda, President George W. Bush's agenda when he took office was a massive tax cut. The administration of George W. Bush saw the dismantling of environmental regulations on oil, timber, and mining industries. And contrary to traditional conservative thought, President George W. Bush oversaw the passage of a prescription drug plan for American seniors under Medicare. So the American electorate began seriously to question the competence of the Bush administration as a result of his mismanagement of the government's response to Hurricane Katrina. Deregulation of financial institutions, which allowed financial institutions to engage in risky practices such as subprime mortgages, contributed to the nation's economic crisis that began in 2007. The economic crisis that began in 2007 caused the paralysis of credit markets. In an attempt to prevent the collapse of the U.S. financial system, Congress passed and President Bush signed into law the Troubled Asset Relief Program. This, in essence, bailed out the banks. So that when Barack Obama took office in 2009, he had inherited a major recession that had the potential to turn into a global meltdown. So new categories in the 2000 U.S. government census that allowed Americans to identify themselves as belonging to more than one race demonstrates that notions of one biological race are sometimes problematic in American society. And by 2003, the second largest ethnic group in the United States were Latinos. The extension of domestic partnership benefits to gay couples in many states and private corporations indicates the rising level of support in the early 21st century for the legal equality of gay and lesbian Americans. And then operating through small cells of terrorists and using the interconnectivity present in globalized world, Al-Qaeda became a truly international or transnational threat. So this is the hodgepodge of information that I'm providing for you as you read the chapters uh, since the 1970s and the conservative agenda.